I've been running Google ads for such a long time that it's pretty much safe to say that I have seen every single reason for product disapproval out there when it comes to your Google Merchant Center. But the unfortunate thing is, product disapprovals are often overlooked by 90% of e-commerce store owners simply because they don't even know how to deal with them, let alone how to fix them and get them removed. Because trust me, the more product disapprovals you have, the more errors that you have within your Google Merchant Center, the worse it is gonna be for your e-commerce brand in the long term. But don't worry, that's why I'm here, that's why this video is here because I'm gonna teach you today how to deal with most of the common disapprovals and the reasons behind those disapprovals so that you never have to deal with them again or even if you do for whatever reason, in, you know how to fix them because again this is an ongoing process as long as you continue to add new products to your e-commerce brand you will have to deal with these product disapprovals a lot of them will come up for just no specific reason so let's go over some of the basics once I'm just gonna really quickly note them down so I've seen a lot of product disapprovals for counterfeit goods I've seen disapprovals for dangerous products even or services you know it's very common based on a specific niche we'll go over that very shortly and the one of the most common and favorite ones misrepresentation not only for the merchant center account itself but also for the products individual inappropriate content you know any kind of content related to the product which is not really allowed on Google that's a common disapproval there's also copyright issues healthcare and medicine related product issues image too small even so if your image is in a certain size you will get this product disapproval notification on your merchant center you have some kind of incorrect value and it's in brackets which says identifier exists you might also have some kind of promotional overlay on the image itself so these are some of the most common disapproval reasons when it comes to your Google Merchant Center account and again I found these through my own e-commerce brands as well as my clients e-commerce brands under my Google Ads agency your marketing which if you're currently doing $30,000 or more per month in revenue you need just a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level go on to my website at euromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can make that happen but let's start off with the first kind of product disapproval counterfeit product exactly what do you do if you get this kind of disapproval even though you are not really falling under this section so doing just a quick google search for disapproval it says that google ads prohibits the sale or promotion for sale of counterfeit goods which means those that contain any types of trademarks or logos that the platform has for products of all sorts and basically is connected to your product in some way shape or form so hence what this is saying is if you're selling bad products basically those products which are not allowed in terms of the actual copyright which also falls under the copyright issue then you will get suspended your product will not be able to be shown to those people and this means that if you're selling for example Nike shoes but then your Nike shoes are fake Nike shoes you don't have any types of GTIN numbers you don't have any types of model identification numbers etc that's gonna kind of trigger this counterfeit goods policy violation so a good way to kind of overdo this to kind Kind of bypass this if of course you're not really selling these fake products because I always say that you should be honest with the kind of product you sell don't try to sell fake goods under the assumption that it's actually the real brand itself so if you have some kind of fake Nike shoes that you're trying to sell for example put the word fake in there or whatever other word you need to do you need to insert to ensure people looking at that product trying to buy your product know that it's a replica it's a counterfeit item it's not the real deal because there is basically no other way to go about this policy violation Google is gonna crawl through your product page it's gonna understand if what you're selling is really a real item or not a real item and trust me Google is very smart so you need to make sure that you are ensuring you have some kind of identification when it comes to the product title itself which distinguishes your fake product from a real product so a customer knows that what you are selling is fake again maybe enter another brand name or take out the word Nike from there just put regular shoes or running shoes whatever you need to to make sure that you do not associate this product with any brand product with any branded counterpart of this product that you're trying to sell which brings me to the next kind of violation that I see often which is the reason for a lot of disapprovals that's like dangerous products or goods so again kind of changes this up now searching up for dangerous products goods and policy we can see that Google basically wants to disapprove any type of product which causes any type of damage harm or injury which means a sniper rifle for example just a very weird example but for example rifles or guns or certain kinds of knives or other types of safety items 
if you sell any of those, Google is not going to allow it. So for example, if I type in rifle right here or rifle for sale, for example, and go on to shopping, you can see that nothing is really coming up besides these ones right here. And of course, these ones are sold by authenticated real brands. They're only able to sell this because of certain keyword optimization strategies that they're using. So for example, it says toy sniper rifle right there. That's why they're able to sell this one right here. And this one right here also has the word rifle in there, but there's certain keywords in there which prevent it from getting full on suspended. So what I'm trying to say is to kind of bypass this dangerous product or services violation. First of all, you need to make sure that you're not selling something absolutely crazy or insane so that in any way or shape or form, it doesn't actually harm any individual. But also if you do qualify and you're not selling anything too crazy or out of this world, like for example, you're selling a toy rifle or you're selling a certain kind of knife, then what you need to do is take care of your search engine optimization techniques because most likely you are not getting approved for that given product because of a certain word or in your title or in your description that is causing that suspension. So you gotta double check your titles, double check your descriptions, make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary which can cause that suspension. But nothing so crazy there, just make sure you're following the basic directions. Again, making sure you don't have anything that goes against the policies in terms of the keywords within the title because as you can see, a lot of these rifles are able to get sold. A lot of these are actually real items sold for a certain occasion. So like for example, this one says Christmas. This one might be more of a hunting rifle. So some things like this, again, depending on how you do keyword research, depending on whether your product has any kind of violations already or not. I mean, if it's a brand new product, it's definitely not gonna get allowed right here. Cause you see a lot of these brands coming up these are big, big brands. You don't really see any normal e-commerce store owner right here or any normal e-commerce brands were just were started last night. So you got to make sure to kind of bypass this, that you are actually taking a little bit of extra precautions with the keywords that you use. But moving on now to misrepresentation policy. So this is one of the biggest issues so many e-commerce store owners face, regardless of whether it's for the product page or the product itself or for the website as a whole. But what you want to understand in terms of Google's actual policy and what Google mentions about this is any type of product only falls under this specific violation category only if they kind of omit certain information such as what, when, or how the customer, your customer is going to get charged on the website, meaning you have a different kind of price on your product page, but then on Google ad side of things here, it says a completely different price. For example, misrepresentation here would be where it says $294, but then when I go on the product page, it says it's actually $296 or something like that. That's misrepresentation. It's not really fully authentic to what they are mentioning right over here. In addition, what you want to understand on a general layout when it comes to misrepresentation for whatever reason, whether it's the product itself or whether it's the website is you are misleading your customer in any way, shape or form. So in order to not fall under this misrepresentation policy, what you need to make sure that you are doing is you're presenting all authentic information from the product page to the actual checkout page to the time when a customer finishes purchasing your product because if there are any issues on the product page, on the Google ad side of things, on the card page, wherever within the funnel, it's going to directly impact that individual product where that changes and it's going to basically disapprove that product under the misrepresentation policy. So you want to make sure whatever you're doing throughout the entire funnel, everything is authentic, everything is the same exact thing wherever the customer goes. And by the way, this includes the settings that you set up in the back end with your Google Merchant Center account, with your Google Ads account, and your Shopify store even. But this brings me to the next kind of product disapproval reason, which is a major reason, which is known as inappropriate content. So any type of inappropriate content, you know, naked woman, naked men, certain parts of the body which should not be shown, which get shown on your Google Ads dashboard. Like for example, if you're selling underwear and you try and you forget to blur the middle portion of that underwear or something like that, then that could lead to this kind of policy violation. Very easy to fix, just make sure there's no kind of too much of skin revealing going on. There's no inappropriate in there, like some kind of gory images within the actual ad itself, any type of blood, any type of vulgar images or text or any source of stuff like that, that's gonna keep you away from the inappropriate content disapproval, very easy to fix. Again, moving on to the copyrights content and the disapproval with copyrights. Again, this goes back to the counterfeit goods violation. If you are selling anything that's fake and Google is able to kind of connect your product with another product out there, which basically is under copyright rules, then Google is gonna suspend that given product that you're selling 
for this violation right here. So to make sure you don't get suspended for copyright issues, make sure that whatever you're trying to sell does not have any type of patent under it or any type of copyright issues related to it. Because again, if it does, you're gonna face major issues with selling that product. You're just not gonna be basically able to sell it. And if you do it too often, Google has the potential to just fully suspend your account. So again, make sure that whatever you're trying to sell is not copyrighted and you have the ability to actually sell it and you can actually source it. Because again, if you're trying to source from overseas, from international sourcers and suppliers, this is a very big issue for those kind of suppliers out there. So make sure again, there's no copyright associated with your given product. But this brings me to healthcare and medicines. Now, I've seen this happen a lot of times, even for those products which are not necessarily healthcare products, medicine related products. Maybe you're selling a piece of soap or something like a shampoo, and this is a suspension that you get. So you need to request a manual review, especially if you know that this is not really the main reason why you got suspended. It shouldn't be at least because you're not selling anything out of the ordinary. It's a very simple product, like a simple shampoo or a simple piece of soap, etc. But if you still face issues like this, then this all comes down to the actual keywords that you inserted within your titles and your descriptions, which is why Google is connecting the product you're trying to sell with another healthcare or medicine related product, which might necessarily not be allowed on Google. So you really gotta double check, make sure that that product that you're trying to sell doesn't have any type of specific keywords which might associate it with the wrong kind of product. It again all comes down to the SEO side of things with healthcare and medicine related violations. Moving on now to image too small. I mean, this is one of the easiest ones to fix and this is one of also the most common ones a lot of e-commerce or owners get. So if you have an image size of anything that's not a square, if it's like, for example, a rectangle like this one right here on my screen, this is sooner or later gonna get through that policy violation, but you gotta make sure your image is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, a full on square. At least that's what Google prefers. That's the specification I also recommend because literally if you do anything else, it's really not gonna make sense. It's gonna be difficult to stand out of the crowd. So to fix the image to small issue, just make sure to resize your image to a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels and that should do the trick. But moving on now to our second to final most common suspension issues, this is called the incorrect value identifier exist issue. And literally almost every e-commerce brand I work with has this issue and that's just because you don't have a GTIN value set for that given product, which is currently getting disapproved for this violation right here. And uh, sometimes what I've noticed is that this violation is actually a real big red colored disapproval or it's an orange colored warning. So if it's an orange colored warning for you, the best way to go about this is to actually submit the product as a custom product. And I'm gonna show you very shortly how to do that. But the next way, if it's a red warning for you is to actually submit a real number if you have it. And I really recommend you look into getting those GTI numbers, especially if you have those and you can provide them in the first place. But let's say you don't really have them and it's not really a big issue for you, then what you wanna do is that you wanna go on over to your feed app. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using Shopify, WooCommerce, Magento, BigCommerce, just make sure to go to that feed app that you're using, go inside that given product, which is facing that violation issue and find this section, which is labeled as the products identifier management section. Because here you most likely have that issue. If this is the first option, which you have chosen, which says submit brand name, MPN and GTIN. So obviously if you don't have a GTIN, you can't necessarily choose this. So what you want to do is you want to choose this third circle, which says submit product as custom product. Now this might do the trick, but if it still doesn't do the trick and after, 14 days, 30 days, you still have that issue, that warning or that red error, then you might wanna try the second option right here. But give both of these a try. I've seen that error get resolved completely with this third option, but some cases it might not get resolved. So this is where you wanna choose this third option. But this brings us to our final reason why most e-commerce stores get disapproved with their products with Google Ads, and that's because they have some kind of promotional overlay on their product. So a promotional overlay counts as any kind of text that you have on the product or anything Google relates to text. So what that means is right here, eBay is selling this product, but we can see that in very small font, there is text on there. So sooner or later, Google ads is gonna catch on to this and it's gonna disprove eBay's product listing ad right here. So the good way to go about this is to make sure your product has no kind of text possible on it. Like if you look at all of these other ads, 
you can clearly see that most of these don't have any kind of text and still they're number one, number two, number three. You can still rank high without having text, which is what I recommend. At least if you don't want to get half of or basically more all of your products disapproved due to the promotional overlay on image issue, because that's going to eventually happen right now. Even if you got by the algorithm, it's going to eventually catch up to it. So to make sure that that doesn't happen for you to not have any kind of text on it. But that kind of sums up some major issues that I've seen a lot of e-commerce stores get their products disapproved for again, just very simple fixes. You don't have to go too crazy. You don't necessarily have to hire anybody just for these. But if you are currently doing $30,000 or more per month in revenue with Google Ads or in general, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level. Go on to my website at euromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, destroy that like button, destroy that subscribe button and watch any of these two videos right in front of my face related to Google Ads that can help you scale. And I will see you in my next video.